Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll have a look again at file system jailbreak checks, but this time, instead of checking for existence of specific files, we'll try to write a file outside of our app sandbox. This should fail on a standard uh, iOS environment, but on a jailbroken device, this succeeds because our apps are run from the root user, who has privileges to do that. In addition to that, we will also make another check for jailbreak status that relies this time on deep links. Pretty much all jailbroken devices run Cydia and Cydia supports special kind of deep links. So basically the check is if the device can handle a special kind of links for Cydia. If it can, then we know that the device is jailbroken. Let's dive in. Here we are back on my computer. This is where we left our jailbreaking exploration, exploration the last time so we have performed file system checks for specific files and this time we will advance a bit more on these because there are some more things that you could do to check whether Cydia is installed in the newest versions of the I of iOS uh, I think not even the newest ones, maybe uh, from iOS 8 and above. Uh, and I'll show you two more things that we could add here. So the first thing is uh, deep links, deep links integration in, with Cydia. So I think since iOS 8 or 9, Cydia has started supporting deep links uh, that are of specific URL scheme so if your app can open this deep link that would mean that you have CD installed and you have CD installed only on jailbroken setups so let me show you how you can check this here's what a deep link to Cydia looks like you have this portion here the start is it starts with Cydia and you have the package um, maybe that's the repo and then you have the package that has to be loaded so if your app can open this URL and I don't like forcing wraps maybe it bothers you too however here I know for a fact that this will become a URL and I really don't want to deal with optionals and I prefer if my check crash like what what will I do in case I find a jailbreak jailbroken environment I want my app to crash and so crashing here in case of invalid URL is fine too because you can count it as the device is jailbroken or the fail or, or the test fails and if the test fails I want to, I want to crash this sounds reasonable but I would advise you not to use that many force and wraps in your code uh, cool so that's the first bit but we'll have the same issue again we're introducing this uh, string that could be easily tracked with hopper in our binary so we want to hide it somehow and how we'll do this in the same way as we did it here with base64 encoded strings let me switch that quickly so you could have a look okay so if we do it like this then we're safe with our strings again our function names don't make sense again so we're hidden away there it all looks nice and it will check for deep links what else we could do uh, to check again whether we're on a jailbroken setup there are more things that could be checked on the file system but these times they are not files but are operations with it operations with the file system so there are some locations outside of your sandbox pretty much everything outside of your app sandbox you don't have write permissions there so you can't really write 
files, read files, some of them. So let's do the this test. We'll create a file in a directory where usually this is not allowed. And if the operation succeeds, then that means that we're jailbroken. If it fails, we st we're still not sure about whether we're jailbroken or not. But uh, but writing in the rules of the file system, let's say writing here in the root or in private that's and if the operation succeeds this definitely means where our process is run by like from the root user with all permissions so we're job broken let's implement this okay so i have added the, that second check and in addition to that i have also written a documentation for our team uh, fellow developers that will use it and if they see this without any documentation they'll be they'll just start swearing at us directly so never introduce function like that without writing a proper documentation about it and what is your motivation behind this name too so yeah that's the second check that i have added so what we're doing here we're creating a file uh, empty file empty data with nothing in it really and we're trying to write it to this location private and that's the name of the file no one will know what this file is don't uh, say jailbreak here again uh, it's not it's not that easily discoverable because it's encoded in base64 again however don't put it like that let it's uh, you're trying to be as discreet as possible here so so better name it somewhere else this file this file will be zero bytes big and what we're doing here basically if we're trying to write there if the write succeeds it's jailbroken for sure but we don't want to leave any garbage in the file system so we're first deleting our file and then we're saying yes the operation was successful where we're having root permissions we're writing in protected folder we're jailbroken yes return yes turn true however if this operation fails and the failure it's because we don't have right permissions that means again that uh, like we're not jailbroken if our permissions are 513 513 you could see here that's the error you don't have permission to save file in this folder cool so if this happens we are running on non jailbroken phone uh, most likely because we were unable to write it there in, or, in order for someone to mess uh, this check it has to execute our process under specific user and user groups and users in ios are not that easy to set up i think i don't have experience there but uh, all processes are launched with the help of one daemon it's called launchd and if you go to a jailbroken phone and type in this command that will give you all of the running things currently all of these processes they're pretty much launched by this guy here the launch daemon kernel is the kernel is with uh, process id 0 after that the first fork in the operating system uh, for those of you if you, who don't know in unix world forking a process is how other processes are started so every process has a parent process and it's created by its parent forking itself and initially it's just like a clone but later it can alter 
like you can load some other binaries there in this uh, forked process and that's how all of these are fired and after the root uh, process the kernel launch daemon starts and it pretty much launches everything else so uh, that's how the operating system starts these things uh, cool no write permissions error so if you don't uh, so yeah what i was trying to tell you is that it's really hard to start a process under other user group so yeah it's uh, you could say that if the write fails most likely the phone is not jailbroken however if the write fails and the reason for failure is not the lack of permissions but it's something else then we don't know for sure that we, our, what is our state is it jailbroken or it's not so to stay on the safe side i'm saying again yes i'm jailbroken i'm jailbroken because something failed i don't know why i know that i can't fail because of these parts are invalid because i have prepared them and checked them prior to this execution i'm sure that this won't fail so if i have some concerns i'm saying i'm jailbroken and that's the most solid check uh, i would say let's try and run it on a jailbroken phone and then we'll run it on a regular phone to see what's the difference so that's the method jailbreak check to let's run it on the jailbroken phone now okay so it runs and as, as you can see it returns true and it's because it the writing was successful let's run it one more time and see where we're going and which breakpoint we we are which whether there was an error thrown and that's our jailbroken phone again so our first statement does not succeed for some reason but let's look at the error now so the error code was not 513 so we're saying we're jailbroken let's look at the error yeah no space left on the device that's because i have so many things installed uh, that i really don't uh, the operating system is not allowing me to write any more things i think i have a couple of kilobytes or something i'm not sure however uh, with you this write should be successful and it should return here but you see that's a really good example here again of an edge case that i'm showing you guys a device can run out of memory and if you say that for all errors you're not jailbroken uh, you will receive an error like mine and th and that would be the only reason why this will fail however you say oh you're not jailbroken and you'll be wrong you will be wrong you will be and your check won't be as robust as you want so that's why you have to be specific about it let's run the same thing now on a non jailbroken phone to see what will happen okay so i have connected my standard phone the iphone xr it's not jailbroken let's look at it what how it will handle it so the app runs and when we try to write an error is thrown but watch carefully what this error is this error is you don't have permission to save the file in the folder so the code is 513 and i'll say i think i'm not jailbroken and this this will be correct this time so 
you saw what kind of mistake could be uh, done if for all errors you say that you're not jailbroken. So keep that in mind. Thanks for your watching guys. In the next video I will show you a couple of more checks that you can do to detect jailbroken device. Stay tuned and have a nice day.